Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to finding the sweet spot. Now we all want to find the sweet spot when we're doing airbrushing, when it comes to paint mixing and air pressure. When you're a beginner, it's really hard to try and get it dialed in. You have trouble with your paint mixing, you have trouble with your air pressure. When you're going up to your piece of work, if you've got too high air pressure and your paint's too thin, you're going to spider it out and blow it out on your artwork. And it's always trying to find that sweet spot. Now, the easiest way to set up an airbrush for pressure and for the sweet spot is first off is what you are painting on. Now, I've got loads of different pieces. They all look white to you on the screen, but we've got vinyl, which is really smooth. We've got a heavy paper here with like a grain in it. We've got A4 copy paper. We've got an aluminium dye bond panel and we've got kitchen roll, which will imitate sort of like your t-shirt material, where it's very absorbent. And you'll see with a set air pressure that I'll show you in a minute, you can get different sort of effects and how the paint will lay down on different surfaces. So it's always key to first look at what you are painting on, whether it is a gas tank, whether it is a plastic RC body, whether it's paper, canvas t-shirt material it all goes to start off with what you are painting on that's the first thing you need to look at is your actual object you're painting on and then you can sort of like look at your paints dial your paints in and then you can dial your pressure in to what you're working on so when it comes to paint if you're using airbrush paints like golden high flow or com art or createx wicked Createx illustration, things like that. They've all got their own sort of characteristics. Some flow better than others. I always use Golden High Flow and I have done from the start. I have used the other paints in the past and I do know how to mix and get them dialed in. But I'm gonna work it from Golden in this video. So simple with Golden is you mix it with water. You're not gonna use reducers, you can just use it tap water out your tap nice and simple these bottles here you can do drops <clears throat> so if i'm mixing golden and it's opaque i will go one drop of golden to one drop of water or one drop of golden to two drops of water similar sort of pot where you can do the droplets out of it so you can go two drops of golden two drops of water like that and that's how i thin it like one to one sort of mix other paints that I've got, like the thick acrylics, where you pull the acrylic out, it's just like one big thick blob. Try and aim to get the consistency like skimmed milk, semi-skimmed milk. If you can get the consistency to that, you'll be good for airbrushing with any acrylic if you get it to that sort of consistency when you, before you put it in your brush. So I'm going to use the Badger Sotar on this little demo on here. I've got the air pressure. Now, when you're first going out and you're setting your air pressure up, aim for around 20 PSI. Start it around 20, see how your paint flow is. I've got a little bit of paint in here now. And just see what 20 PSI feels like in your brush because different brushes perform differently as well. You can put 20 PSI in one brush say the micron and it doesn't seem like you've got any air coming out it seems really low you put 20 psi in the badger and you'll hear it and it just seems a little bit more fierce so it goes on your brush as well but aim for 20 psi now the badger sprays 20 psi absolutely fine as you can see on that bit there so when it comes to t-shirts 20 psi T-shirt material is very forgiving. You can sit at around 20 up to 40 PSI in your airbrush on T-shirt material because when you blast the paint at a T-shirt, like I'm going to do on this little test piece of kitchen towel to sort of simulate T-shirt, you can hammer the paint on and it doesn't bleed out. You don't get any spider webbing. You can just hammer it straight down. You can get full coverage, full opaque, and you've not got to worry because that material there is literally grabbing onto the paint and absorbing it straight away. Same as when you move on to 
like a cartridge paper like this, this thicker bodied paper here, you can hammer the paint down again. You don't get any spidering. It handles it really, really easy because it's a very sort of porous surface where the paint will just hit it and absorb straight in and then sort of dry out and the paper takes all the moisture out of the paint. So them two sort of substrates are good for just like a high pressure for your paint to go straight down and you won't have any troubles with. When you've got to start dialing your paints in is when you start going on to smoother surfaces and things like that, like working on car bonnets, petrol tanks, shiny surfaces like plastics and things like that. You've got to start watching your pressures. So if I do the same sort of hit as what I've just done on these two on the aluminium, it's a different ball game guys. We just completely ran out of paint because I've got a little cup on this. Just fill that up. Same pressure, different surface, and that spiders out big time. Now that's because that is a smoother surface. The paint is going straight down to something smooth and it just wants to push out. It's got nothing to like soak into. When you start going on smooth surfaces, you can use the same paint mix as what I've got that I've used on these, but you've just got to start dialing your air pressure down. So I would now drop that down to probably around 10 PSI go in and you'll be okay you'll be able to not get that paint down on that panel okay it's the same if you use it on things like vinyl as well you go in on vinyl heavy and it will just start to build up and it'll be you can see that it doesn't dry straight the way it don't absorb in it sits on the top of a smooth surface so when you're looking at smooth surfaces just have a little think don't commit yourself and go straight in on high pressure and thin paint. If you have got thin paint, just knock that pressure back. If you're on things like card, copy paper, t-shirt material, your higher pressures, you'll sort of get away with. You won't get any spidering or sort of bleed outs because the paint will just absorb straight in. So always have a look at your services to start off with, what you're working on, then go to your paints, dial your paint into a consistency of skimmed milk or semi-skimmed milk. Get that paint consistency like that. If you're going in on something smooth, just knock that air pressure back and you'll find that sweet spot. When you airbrush on something like this, I'm putting minimal paint down because I can get this paint to work on these smooth surfaces. But I'm just putting very little paint down on this and I can get it to work. Not a problem. But that will come with experience when you get on further down the line. You'll be able to adjust your pressures and you'll know what your paints can do. Because I've been working with Golden so long, I know exactly how to mix it and what pressure I can get away with on the surfaces that you see on here. So I hope this has helped you out if you're a beginner. Look at your surface first, what you can start working on, then move over to your paints. Golden High Flow is fine on all these. If you're working with golden on t-shirts, you'll need a sealer just to put over the top and seal it. But everything else, it works absolutely fine. I've used it on actual vinyl. Just prep your vinyl up it will go down to the vinyl. So your RC bodies and things like that, absolutely fine. All your different papers and things, fine. Aluminium, absolutely fine. And that's why I use that paint, because it's very versatile across all the surfaces. I've never had any dramas with it when I've come to airbrushing. So hope this little video has helped you out on pressure, finding that sweet spot. Just look at your surfaces that you're working on. Dial your pressure in a ballpark 20, go off 20 PSI. Mix your paint consistency to like semi-skimmed milk. And then if you're going in on something smooth like that or vinyl, just start, don't commit straight away with 20 to 30 PSI. Just knock that PSI down to like 10 
and just have a little practice panel like that. It's good to practice on these different surfaces. It really is. Mast up your surfaces like this and it just makes it a little bit easier when you go to commit on a piece of artwork. So I hope you enjoy this little video on finding the sweet spot with your airbrush paint and pressure and I will see you in the next one guys. Cheers.